the station covering all of the DMV. This is DC News Now. And coming up in the news at noon, commanders in hot water. Once again, we're live at a news conference where DC's Attorney General expected to make a big announcement regarding the team. And later, another teen shot in broad daylight, and a suspect remains on the loose. We'll have the latest details. And good afternoon, and thank you for joining us for the news at noon. I'm Mark Hall. Weathercaster Brittany Ward, who is filling in for meteorologist Damon Matson, joins us with the latest check on the forecast. And Brittany, another sunny day in the region. I'm really starting to feel this whole fall experience in the DMV, but I know people in your business will tell us at some point change is coming. Yeah, Mark, change is definitely on the horizon. Today is going to be yet another beautiful day. We will be a little bit warmer today than we were yesterday with our highs getting back into the 60s. But come tomorrow, we are tracking a few rain showers for your Friday, and it looks like they will linger on into Saturday. So definitely keep it here. We'll have a look at that forecast and how Nicole is going to impact the DMV. That's coming up in just a bit. All right, Brittany, thank you. We're breaking now. A 17 year old has been shot on 5th Street Northwest. Currently, there's not a lot of information on the victim's condition or the motive. DC police have released the suspect's photo. He was last seen running down M Street towards 4th Street. Police advise you not to take action. If you see this individual, call 911. Well, this afternoon, DC's Attorney General Carl Racine will hold a news conference to make a major announcement. Related to the Washington Commanders, DC News Now's Daniel Hamburg joins us live outside of the AG's office. And Daniel, a lot of attention around this today. Yeah, Mark, that's absolutely right. The AG's office launched an investigation into the team around the time the U.S. House Committee for Oversight and Reform referred its case regarding at first uh, workplace culture issues and then uh, looking into financial improprieties. We don't know exactly what this press conference will reveal today and neither do the commanders. Uh, so I'm told a spokesperson said in a statement they learned about this so-called major announcement on social media saying quote the commanders have fully cooperated with the AG's investigation for nearly a year. As recently as Monday, a lawyer for the team met with the AG who did not suggest at that time he intended to take any action and in fact revealed fundamental misunderstandings of the underlying facts. Last night's statement also made mention of the August shooting of running back Brian Robinson, placing blame on Racine for not making the streets safe, though the team president reportedly walked back that part of the statement, saying the two issues should have been separate. You'll remember just last week, team owner Dan and Tanya Snyder announced they hired Bank of America to look into selling part or all of the team. Virginia attorney, Virginia's attorney general Jason Miaris is also investigating the team looking into potential uh, financial improprieties. We'll bring you uh, this uh, press conference as soon as we have it. It starts at 1 o'clock here in D.C. and we will have live updates online and on air throughout the night. We're live uh, in Northwest. Daniel Hamburg, D.C. News Now. Daniel, thank you. Well, one man is dead after a shooting in Fairfax County last night. The man who shot him, a homeowner who police believe was protecting his property. D.C. News Now's Lex Juarez spent the morning in the area and joins us from Oakton with the latest details. Fairfax County Police are still investigating exactly what happened, but they do say they believe this shooting was in self-defense, and they do say that one man is dead. Another one was sent to the hospital. It happened at the home just down the street here from where I'm at. Now, there are still police caution tape up here 12 hours later, as well as a police car parked in the driveway. Fairfax County Police say the shooting happened around 6 6 o'clock on Wednesday night, they say a homeowner was outside on his property and had some kind of altercation with another man. The homeowner then went back inside of his home at that point, and the man also followed him into the home with a large rock in hand. That's when the homeowner shot and killed the man, according to police. As we can interview more folks, review the surveillance footage, we can get a better understanding of what happened outside. 
um, but there was an assault that occurred outside on the property that led the homeowner to retreat back into the home uh, that led to our damage. Well, the homeowner was taken to the hospital with minor injuries, but was not placed under arrest. There were also two children and two other adults inside of the home at the time of the shooting. Neighbors in the area tell me that they are surprised that this happened in their area and here in Oakland. And they also tell me that they did hear the police presence, but that they didn't hear anything else when it does come to this specific incident. In Oakton, Virginia, I'm Lex Juarez. D News now. Well, new at Noon Rebel, the electric vehicle company has decided to close their DC uh, moped services on November 22nd. Uh, their mopeds will were used all over DC over three years, and the company did release that the mopeds will remain available in New York City and San Francisco, along with their rideshare service and electric vehicle charging super hub network. Well, consumer prices rose at a slower rate in October as annual inflation fell to 7.7% compared to 8.2% inflation in September. Experts expected the inflation rate to be closer to 79 last month, so the October rate is encouraging. While the decline in inflation is not enough to stop the Federal Reserve from raising interest rates, it could slow down the pace of the hikes. Americans saw the biggest drop in the used car industry and energy services. Or your election headquarters and this afternoon, a one key race in Maryland still on the call. Right now, Republican state delegate Neil Parrott is ahead of incumbent Congressman David Trone. Now, at this point, it's not clear how soon the race could be called, and neither candidate has conceded to the other. Maryland's 6th Congressional District covers parts of Montgomery, Frederick, and Washington counties, plus all of Western Maryland. Well, the impact of the election continues, and some states are still working to tally votes in key races. Now, those races will determine if Democrats keep their slim majority in the House and Senate. Washington correspondent Anna Wernicke has the latest on the balance of power. It was a good day, I think, for democracy. In his first address to the nation following Tuesday's midterms, President Joe Biden says Democrats had a strong night. We lost fewer seats in the House of Representatives than any Democratic president's first midterm election in the last 40 years. The president says Democrats exceeded expectations and avoided a Republican blowout. While the press and the pundits are predicting a giant red wave, uh, it didn't happen. President Biden says he spoke with House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy, who early Wednesday declared his candidacy for speaker if Republicans gain control of the House as expected. We are going to take the House back. But the Senate remains in limbo. Ballots in Arizona and Nevada continue to be counted. I'm like Ricky Bobby. I don't come to lose. We will hear from the people of Georgia. And in the Georgia Senate race between Herschel Walker and Raphael Warnock, neither candidate got 50% of the votes, forcing a December 6th runoff election. So ballots are being built as we speak, and counties are making preparations. Well, right now, the Senate is split 50 50 with Vice President Kamala Harris holding the tie breaking vote, so Republicans only need to pick up one additional seat to gain control of the Senate. The day after complete, completing an historic victory in Tuesday's gubernatorial race, the incoming governor of Maryland, Wes Moore, spoke one on one with DC News Now's Leonard Fleming. He asked the governor elect about what he'll look to accomplish in his first 100 days and if that includes pushing a $15 minimum wage. And one of those things you talked about during the campaign is the $15 minimum wage. Is that a priority in your first 100 days? Can you get it done? Yes. Yeah. I mean, that, that, that is a priority where we know that right now it's slated to happen in 2025, and, and that is too late. It needs to happen next year. Uh, we've got to make sure that people are getting paid a fair wage for the work that they are doing. The way you actually do hard things is you take them head on. The way you do hard things is you actually move in partnership to be able to accomplish those things. You know, we know we have real issues and we know we have real challenges as a state that we have to be able to address. And you can find the full interview with Governor-elect Wes Moore on our website or YouTube page. We knew today one person is dead and 13 are in the hospital after a multi-state outbreak of listeria infections. And the cases could be linked to deli meat and cheese. According to the Centers for Disease Control, 
The outbreak includes three people in Maryland. Investigators at the CDC say it's tough to identify a single source for the outbreak since the disease can be easily spread between food. They say the best defense is to avoid deli meat and cheese unless it's been reheated until steaming, uh, until steaming hot and clean those surfaces that may have been touched. Uh, food like your refrigerator and countertops. Well, new today, the D.C. Council at large race has been called with Kenyon McDuffie and Anita Bonds securing those two seats. Council member Lisa, Sil Lisa Silverman officially conceded the election last night. Silverman said that she congratulated both McDuffie and, Indep and the Independent from Ward 5 and Bonds, who won her bid for re-election. Silverman previously served as an at-large council member alongside Bonds. An 18-year-old is one of the youngest council members in Maryland history after he was elected to represent the 5th District and Frederick County Council. Mason Carter received around 70% of votes, defeating Democrat Juliana Lefkin. The Trump-inspired politician promised to reduce taxes and government regulation. Carter will join the council as he continues his freshman year at Frederick Community College.